All righty, here at MGM, about to jump in here, play some one, three, probably, just to start it off, maybe play some two, five, if things go right. Um, right now, uh, buying in for 300 is what we're gonna do. Uh, see, my, this is my sweater right here. Everybody knows casinos get super cold sometimes. So, about to jump in right now, and uh, hopefully we can run it up, let's go. So, in the first hand, we're just gonna start off with the banger. So, I have ace, queen of clubs in the cutoff, and when it limps around to me, I decide to raise it up to 15. It then folds around to the big blind, who then snap raises to 50. The middle position player who limped also decides to call the three bet for 50. So I'm putting him on middle pocket pairs. He's trying to hit a set or something like that. But I don't really have a great feeling about this. And you know you don't have a great feeling when the raise comes to you, and this is how you put your chips in the pot. Two, three, four, five. So obviously I'm going to need a lot of help here. So please like and subscribe for the first vlog. And you know for vloggers, that's always great luck. So here we go. Well, it must have worked because the flop comes out. Ace, queen, eight, let's go. We have top two pair in a three bet pot. So now when the big blind leads out for 50, the middle position player then raises to 150. So he's repping a narrow range of hands like pocket eights. But I've already decided I'm willing to get all my money in. But when it gets to me, I just decide to flat the 150. I want to see what the big blind player decides to do with this. And when it gets back to him, he snap rips it all in. So the middle position player then decides to fold. So when it gets to me, I go ahead and toss in the one chip call. The dealer does the count. I have the big blind player covered. So the total ends up being 401. So now we're off to a turn, which is a king. The river is a six. He flips over ace king, and wow, he sucked out on us. So on to the next hand. And let me just explain a quick situation right here. So normally I would always top up, but the problem is my friend was playing 2-5. He busted out, came to me, asked me for four hundred dollars and i gave it to him and then i went to the atm and they told me i was over my limit so now all i have is about 90 something dollars and that's all i have to get back with so anyways on to the hand as you see i got pocket kings when it gets to me i raise to 15 everyone else folds until it gets to the button who then raises to 40 obviously this is a quick spot i don't waste no time i get it all in we flip him over he has pocket jacks I have pocket kings, and he has me covered just by a little bit, but I'm looking to get a full double up, hoping that the bad beat comes, but either way, bad beat or hold. So either way, the dealer runs out the cards, it runs out pretty clean, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So we get a double up, so now we're about at 180 or so in our stack, yeah. and we're looking for the next hand. So... In this hand, we have four or five of diamonds. And let me tell you right now that this is my favorite hand of all time. So whenever I have it, I'm willing to raise with it, call three bets with it. So let's see how this hand does for me this time. So when it gets to the button, he decides to raise to $10. I call out a small blind, the big blind completes, and we're going three ways to a flop. And it comes three of spades, six of diamonds, seven of clubs. So yes, we flopped the nuts. So the big blind decides to bet 10, the button folds, and I slow play and call the 10. So when the turn comes, the two of spades, I check it to him, hoping to check raise, but he doesn't. So on the river, it comes the 10 of hearts, which changes nothing. We still have the nuts. So I bet 15, and he's tanking for a long time for $15, but eventually you can tell he did an agonizing pain decides the call. Listen to this. Alright, cool. I flopped the straight. What? Seven high straight. And that is why 4 5 suited is my favorite hand. It never does me in a wrong. Scoop the pot, on to the next one. Alright, so on to the next hand. We're back on the get back trail. So now we're looking at pocket queens. Really good hand. I'm under the gun. So I decided to raise it up to 15. It folds all the way around to the cutoff. Who decides to make the call along with the button. So we're going three ways to the flop. And when we see the flop, we see it as jack of diamonds, eight of spades, five of hearts. Pretty good looking flop for pocket queens. So I go ahead and just throw out a $25 bet, feeler bet, kind of see where everyone's at. So when it gets to the cutoff, he thinks for a little while. 
probably too long, but he finally ends up deciding to go ahead and let his cards go. And the button, he decides to go ahead and stick in the call. So we're off to the turn, which is the deuce of clubs, which never changes anything. So I go ahead and I bet 45. He takes for a little minute, trying to decide what he wants to do. I'm thinking maybe he might come over the top, which I'm going to call, but he ends up just calling. And now we're off to the river, which the river, even better card, two of spades. So if he has some weird two pair hand that he had, we're ahead of that now. So now I decide to bet 90. And just so you know how incredibly long he's tanking, this is going in two and a half times speed. And it still takes a long time for him to come to the decision. But obviously it's a pretty big bet. So finally he decides to stick in the call. And when he does... I flip over my pocket queens. It's good. And we get another pot coming our way. And we are officially back even. Let's go. Alrighty, so here we go. This is the last hand of the night. So we start off with king seven of diamonds. And I really want you guys to tell me what you think about this hand. Because the other hands kind of play themselves out. But this one, it got a little dicey. So just give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. So it starts off with me being in the cutoff. And I don't do the best thing. I limp in for $3, and it folds around to the big blind who decides to raise to $25. So the under-the-gun player calls, under-the-gun plus one also decides to call. So now I'm feeling like I'm priced in, so I go ahead and make the call as well. So now the dealer puts out a flop of the king of spade, the ten of diamond, and the six of club. And the big blind player immediately goes all in. The undergun calls, it gets to me, I call. So now we're off to the turn. And the turn brings us the magical and glorious seven of heart. So now we're off to a dry side pot and the undergun player bets 20. I decide to raise to 100. He doesn't take too much time and he decides to call. The river brings us the nine of diamonds. So it's four to a straight. So I'm not really liking this and it just goes check, check. I have two pair. We end up scooping. We ended up going against ace king and king queen. And I turned two pair. And that was good for the win. So that's it for the vlog. Last hand of the night. We get a nice decent sized pot. Let's go. Alrighty y'all. That's the end of the vlog. So we initially bought it for $300. We got stacked. And then I, I reset my wallet. All I had was $100 left. So actually... Got lucky that $100 brought us all the way back up to $600. It was feels good to every poker player knows when you're down, you get stacked and you crawl your way back and you actually make a win for the night. It's a great win. So uh, total in the game for $400, out for $601. Total profit of $201. I'll take it. It was a hell of a fight. And um, I appreciate everybody for watching. If you're uh, subscribed, stay subscribed. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Show a friend, like, share, comment, all that stuff us YouTubers want you to do. Uh, so, once again, thank you for watching. Until next time, holla.